It's a massively bullish sign that Trump even went there. We were talking about the president of the United States of America. You can't get bigger than that, really. It makes me feel bullish about everything. Imagining him winning the election. And after that, yeah, I think we are going to the moon. Definitely, we are going to the moon. I was one of the, you know, one of those sheep, you know, um, just a few years ago. But Bitcoin completely changed me. These people are not going to go down without fighting. Just look at the Bitcoin conference the last 10 years. Yeah. The first one with like 100 people in, in, the, in the conference room room half empty and Andr Andreas Antonopoulos is speaking and nobody's yeah. listening. Ten years later, you have a conference with 20,000 people. They are lining up a whole day to get in to see the 47th president of the United yeah. States. Yeah, we'd like to see things like that in, in, in Europe. And you just came from Prague here to Vienna just for a visit? Yes, yes. Um, well, I've been in Austria before, but never in Vienna so this is my first time so I'm looking oh. forward to um, you know discovering the city later on later this evening you know exp exploring different places in Vienna so yeah I, and, it, and it's the home of Austrian economics it's really it how, is. how far down the rabbit hole did you go with Austrian economics I mean a little bit is in every Bitcoiner yeah and some went really deep uh, some are like oh okay a little bit how, how deep did you I go? must say I'm not really that deep but I'm aware of it yeah I've, um, I kind of learned the basics of it but I've got quite a few friends around me um, I don't want to mention any names but um, there is this particular young lad I think he's 17 maybe 18 now he's from Turkey He's mad about it. I think he, he must have read like, I don't know, at least seven, eight, maybe 10 books about it. You know, he's, if, if I have any trouble, trust me, I'm going to go to him. You know, he knows everything inside out. But um, yeah, Austrian economics is, is, is really, you know, important for all Bitcoins as well. All Bitcoiners, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting for me because I am from Austria. Mm -hmm. I studied for a short time economics in Austria and yeah. there is no Austrian economics. Uh, I even talked with people that were having decrease in Austrian economics in Austria. Right. <laughs> but they never talked about uh, Austrian economics. It's not a, not, it's not, it's, it's all Keynesian uh, things. Yeah, yeah. And we talked before uh, what uh, what you kind of like you are on, on a free a free week trip. So you did not learn, like you did not wear in the Bitcoin space too much but you still heard about Trump, right? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And, um, you know, I, I read quite a few things um, on Twitter about it and I thought, okay, is it really that bad? You know, I have to watch it for myself. So um, just a couple of nights ago, I watched it. Okay, it wasn't all that, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, Donald Trump is a politician. He promoted himself a lot, as expected. Um, and he said a few things about Bitcoin, few more other things about crypto he just mixed the up as you know um it wasn't like pure bitcoin stuff but um it is what it is it is what it is you know no bad you know they say you know there is no bad publicity you know so yeah <laughs> and i think just uh just the thing that he was around at the bitcoin conference like that he uh came to the bitcoin conference that's a huge thing like i it, think it is in a, isn't it the first time a politician um goes to a bitcoin conference I haven't N not the politician but the first time there's a presidential candidate mm. for uh, like even more than a presidential candidate that likely win yeah uh, if nothing major happens that will never happen before yeah like yeah. rfk was last year also at the bitcoin conference uh he's yeah. now the presidential candidate but that's that's a major thing it, it is it is and um i mean Imagine him winning the you know the presidency in November, if I'm not wrong, their the, um, mm. the election, and it'll be interesting to see what happens after that. Um, and then you have to think that's a bit that's a president of the United States that said Bitcoin to the moon, which yeah. is one uh, quote of him. Yeah, he said never sell your Bitcoin. That's it. Th those are some. I feel like uh, we can focus on like oh he said crypto a lot of times. We can focus on what he not said. Uh, but I think like it's a massively bullish sign that Trump even went there, that he even said those things in the beginning and that that just a president is there at the Bitcoin conference. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, um, and I mean, we we're talking about, you know, the president, ex-president or the presidential candidate of the United States of America. You can't get bigger than that, really, yeah. you know, so um, he's there. Um, so. It makes me feel bullish about everything, really. As I said, you know, um, imagining win him winning, you know, winning, um, winning the election. And after that, yeah, I think we are going to the moon. Definitely, we are going to the moon. And 
uh, he mentioned the um, the um, American government having like two hundred ten thousand uh, yeah. bitcoins, and then um, I saw another politician lady. I can't remember the her. I can't remember the name of her, but she said something like, oh, I don't know, uh, America will buy like, what, half a million Bitcoins or something oh, yes. like that, remember? S yeah. S Cynthia Lumez. I mean, yeah, I mean, things are happening, I think, you know, things are happening, but wouldn't you like to see something similar over here in Europe? That, that's my, yeah. what, that was my next question for yeah. you, actually, because uh, I am, as a European, I had the European election. Mm. Uh, and I searched for all Austrian parties. Mm -hmm. I searched all programs. I searched there for words like Bitcoin, crypto, and digital currencies, everything like that. Yeah. There was no word. Nothing. There was a word of the digital euro. <laughs> yeah. But nothing of Bitcoin, nothing of, not even cryptocurrencies was yeah. in there. Yeah. I mean, it is the same in the UK. It is the same in the UK. You know, we had um, our general election just just a few weeks, about four weeks ago, if I'm not wrong, but nothing about Bitcoin. I mean, they have everything, all types of restrictions, you know, against Bitcoin or crypto, you know, however you want to name it. Uh, but when it comes to talking about Bitcoin, they won't do it. Um, and I know soon enough, they're going to bring out the CBDCs as well. Um, in the UK, that's going to happen. That's that's definitely going to happen. And also in like in Europe as well. European Union, you know, they're just working so hard to bring out the CBDCs in Europe. And um, we don't like it, but it is what it is. So what can you do? Just stack more Bitcoin. That's what I do. Yeah. And I think it's not bad for like Bitcoin and anything. It's just bad for the for the region. Because people like me right now, I'm thinking of like, does is it worth it to leave the European Union? Is it worth to for me getting somewhere else and maybe get some nomad status, get mm. somewhere else a citizenship, and then travel around the world yeah. and leave the European Union? Uh, I mean, you are not no longer in the European Union because no. uh, UK left it. Um, like I think we discussed it last time, also in the podcast. But did it got better or worse? Uh, and how is the UK? Is there any mention of Bitcoin? No, not at all. I think it got worse. Oh. I think it got worse. In fact, you know. I feel like it's getting worse, you know, by the day, not in just, you know, not in the UK only, but generally speaking in Europe, oh. right? In the UK, we've got a new government now, um, a Labour government, um, and um, so Keir Starmer is the uh, new Prime Minister. He's been in power for the last, what, four years, uh, sorry, four weeks. But I have to tell you, I haven't, I haven't heard one single positive thing that considers the UK citizens nothing mm. nothing in fact uh, it was like within the first week he pledged um three billion pounds to the um uh, to ukraine every year for as long as the war continues oh, instead wow. of saying oh you know what we're going to do anything we can to you know find the solution find you know peace um but no they're just supporting uh the war and i think the uk isn't the only country you know that oh. does this so um yeah, I think things are getting worse. Uh, but then again, just like you, I've got quite a few friends around me from Europe. They are considering, you know, moving somewhere else. But um, the kind of friends I'm talking about, they're either on their own or just, you know, with a girlfriend. See, for example, if I talk about myself, no, I've got responsibilities. I've got a child. I've got, you know, I've got, everything I've got is here. So it's a bit difficult. And also um, age-wise, I'm two years you know just two years away from 50 i am so i'm 48 yeah last week it was my birthday oh you're almost double me <laughs> yeah yeah so um i really don't want to move around yeah. unless i have to um but yeah i mean just like you you know i've got a lot of people around me thinking about me you know leaving the european union it, it's not an easy decision to make for anyone really yeah I think like it's uh, it's a decision that you can either take now or maybe later or maybe it gets better. Uh, but if, if if things are progressing, like at some point you have to make the decision if you leave a shrinking step, if, if you if you really see it like that. But it could get better. Like uh, politicians always can get real. Uh, some other politicians can mm -hmm. get in and, and like even in Europe, we can see it like uh, the parties that are critical of the European Union, 
they got stronger in the, in the last election. So this yeah. is a massive sign, a democratic sign yeah. uh, that uh, there's things happening. Um, change might, might happen and, and, and I hope it happens, you know, for better, obviously. You know, the way things are going at the moment, I don't like it. I don't think anyone does. But um, while we were talking, I, I just remembered I've got, um, again, it, this is a Bitcoiner. Um, I don't want to name the guy now, but he actually told me a few weeks back that he wanted to buy an open ticket. I didn't know what an open ticket was. It, apparently it's just a, you know, a plane ticket, but there's no date on it. So you can use it anytime you want. So if it's a, a normal ticket, say like it's 500 euros, you pay 1500 for this, but an open ticket, open destination, he, he said to me, you know, if anything happens, if I feel it, that's I'm just getting on a plane and I'm going wherever I want to go. So, I mean, there are people out there making plans and I don't want to scare anyone, but yeah, I think people 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 are feeling that you know you know things aren't right. So um, yeah, people are getting prepared. I think for something. I have know. an interesting three questions that I want to give you each yeah. one of it uh, individual uh, right now to this topic. Okay. The first question is for you: What does freedom mean to you? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, freedom. Um, that. That is a very deceptively, you know, simple question. What does freedom mean to me? Freedom is, I am one of those guys who believes um, absolute freedom doesn't exist. You know, but freedom in general, yeah. Freedom, me being able to do um, whatever I want to do within reason, that is, um, without having to, um, you know, get any permit. You know, that, that's freedom, you know, in, in the simplistic, you know, terms, really. Um, but do we have that freedom in the UK or in the European Union? No. And I, I feel like, you know, every, every month, if not every week, I hear about something new, some new restrictions, you know, being imposed on us. So, um, yeah, freedom means a lot. But do we have it? I don't think so. Yeah. Do you consider yourself free? No. To a certain degree, yes, maybe seemingly compared to some other countries, yes. But within the society that we're living, um, not really, no. But also not individually? No, mm. no. Because if I have to, um, living in the UK, trust me, before you do anything, you have to get a permit. Ah. It's a simplistic things. Um, you want to put a satellite dish outside your house? A satellite dish, you know, to, you know, um, yeah, you have to get a permit from the local council. Yeah, it, it is like that. It is like that. Um, as I said, you know, it, it's, a, it's a deceptively simple question, but if you dive into it, no, it's not, it, there is no, you know, a uh, simple answer for it. Yeah, I was going with those questions uh, because I really want to dive into how we can expand our freedom uh, and what we can do. And uh, I feel like Bitcoin is the major first step. Mm -hmm. like no matter what you want to do, if you want to really have the, the most freedom possible for you, free, Bitcoin is the 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 fundamental to it because it's money right it's, it's like Definitely. the fundamental thing is there anything else that you're like this is the thing that i do to protect my freedom the, the freedom that i have yeah right first of all you know like everybody everybody else like yourself you know i i, I regularly stack bitcoin but um as i said to you before we started this podcast um i'm stacking bitcoin um, not for my own freedom, but hopefully for my daughter's freedom in the future, because mm. I, you know, things are going to get a lot worse in the future. You know, um, I always tell my friends, even in this, you know, um, a broken fiat world, I, if I am kind of all right on my own, I'm all right. But thinking about my daughter's future, I don't feel all right. Mm. So um, I stack regularly. If I get to benefit from that, I'm lucky. But other, other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely stacking for my daughter's future and her freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what we can do, there are plans, uh, future plans um, of Bitcoiners. And, and I'm always, you know, talking to these Bitcoiners. These Bitcoiners literally, you know, want to get together and start their own little towns and, you know, um, organizations and all that. And um, it's really intriguing, really. I, li I listen to these people. I, I speak to those people. And um, generally speaking, they are not Europeans. They're more Americans, you know, freedom and all that. Um, but no, uh, 
who knows who knows you know where you will be you know a year from now two years from now um despite you know everything i just said you know i said oh i'm like two years away from 50 and everything who knows maybe five years from now i'm going to be in one of those um bitcoin towns you know i know yeah it might be might be cool also maybe considering uh kids and maybe considering family like mm. uh, maybe it's better for them there in those bitcoin towns. definitely definitely um in terms of education <coughs> as well i mean my daughter is um almost 14 she goes to um a school um But I'm always um, suspicious, of, not not just my daughter, but, you know, suspicious about what the kids are learning at school. Mm. Yeah. Do, do you call, uh, review what she's learning in school? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just the standard things. You know, they teach, you know, geography, maths, I don't know, whatever, you know, all that are fine, fine. But um, kids, um, including my daughter, you know, she comes back with like, extra stuff from school. But it's not just the school either it's 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 the social media you know from tiktok to facebook whatever you know they use really kids um uh i mean propaganda is all out there from the schools to the social media tv um yeah propaganda is everywhere and if we can and if we can separate ourselves from that and, and hope you know bitcoiners are like that bitcoiners um, are aware of things as well and if we can educate our own kids in our values oh That would be perfect. Yeah, I would live in a place like that. What is the fun fundamental thing that we need? I feel like critical thinking is something that Definitely. is so important. Yes. Just two questions. And a lot of people out there, they, they are, you know, incapable of asking those questions. How and why? Just two questions. How, you know, you, you see something. Okay, how does this happen? And why does this happen? Critical mm -hmm. thinking is... Just so important. Now, was I always like this? No, I wasn't. I was one of the, you know, one of those sheep, you know, um, just a few years ago. But Bitcoin completely changed me and the way I see things, the way I view things, you know. Um, uh, it happens to everyone, I'm sure. I'm sure it happened to you. It happened to, you know, everyone I know. So I, I, I feel so, so safe in this community. Um You know, when we talk about Bitcoin, in fact, Bitcoin, we, we talk about Bitcoin, but the majority of the subjects, you know, when, we, you know, we get together, we talk about history, we talk about economics, we talk about uh, the history of economics, right? We, we talk about, you know, diets, eating meats, you know, and, and freedom and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not just Bitcoin. And I'll tell you, over the last, what, three years, I learned a lot, much more than I ever knew. Um Yeah, I always say that. Um, yeah. I was, uh, think about if I have a stock podcast. Think about me being in a stock podcast, mm -hmm. talking about which uh, stocks to buy, what to do, what to look out for. Would also be an interesting topic, but I would never talk about parenting. And I have... <laughs> <I> <laughs> But and I have an episode mm -hmm. with uh, Lisa Huff on oh, yes. my show, and she's like the the the, the mother of Ella Huff. Yeah, uh, and we talked only about parenting. Yeah, the whole episode was about parenting. It was the second round with her. Yeah, and I was like, let's pick a topic that you're also passionate about. Yeah, that maybe dives also in Bitcoin, but is something a little bit outside and we talked about everything yeah. except bitcoin yeah and the people loved it this was not and a that's fine episode. and that's fine that this is what i'm saying you know bitcoiners don't just talk about bitcoin because there are like so like so many things that you can say about bitcoin and we say that all the, you know we say all those things all the time and that's it we know all that but there are so many other things that bitcoiners value as you say like parenting families um i don't know you know freedom um history you diet. know all that diet is yeah. exactly diet um yeah so I, i as i said you know i value you know these people and the information that the things i learned from them so i appreciate you know all my friends you know um over here in europe over there in you know america and canada I know there's so many people and hopefully at some point, you know, I'll get to meet them as well. Um, and this is this is really good as well, you know, because you start talking to people, you know, on, on Twitter in space and everything. And finally, we get together. Um, that bond, you know, yeah, is there. You can feel it. So I enjoy every minute of it. Yeah. I also feel like we should as we should meet as much as possible. 
we should uh, as bitcoiners mm. those connections you make offline yes with other bitcoiners with yeah. like-minded people it's really great and there's so many possibilities in almost every city there is a meetup yeah uh, uh, you can always uh, download orange build up yeah uh, you can go to bitcoin conferences that, which are really big like the bitcoin Prague, uh, bitcoin nashville yeah uh, the madeira one they're like just open up Google and say like Bitcoin conferences. There are so yeah, many. Yeah, there's so many there. now. Yeah. So there is no excuse to not meet other Bitcoiners offline. And the feedback I always get is it's so easy to make like-minded friends. Everyone is so open there. Exactly. I mean, look, um, in fact, I tweeted about it just two days ago, I think two, three days ago. Look, I mean, I got to meet so many different people. Never mind Bitcoin, it's people. And we all have like different characteristics, different interests. We're all different, but we all unite in this one subject, Bitcoin. And, um, and you know, the Bitcoin brings us together. And then you get to know people. Yeah, you, we have different interests and everything. But then again, oh, you know what? We agree on history. We agree on, you know, economics. We agree on not just one subject that is Bitcoin, but also, you know, other stuff as well. But um, I don't know, I'm an Arsenal supporter, you might be a Manchester United supporter, <laughs> and that's fine. But um, yeah, no, generally speaking, Bitcoiners, once they meet, yeah, they get on well. They really get on well, yeah. I love Arsenal. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but I'm not a huge football fan, so, so it's easy to see for me. Um, really, really cool. I, before I go to the next topic, I want to last on the community. You are one of the vocal voices that wants to bring up more European uh, Bitcoiners on the stage. I feel like that's one of the things that you try to do more with Coffee yes, Europe and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Um, look, uh, as English speakers, you know, um, we are always exposed to, we are always in American Bitcoin spaces. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I said this many times before, so I'll say it one more time. Um, I love my American friends. I love my Canadian friends, right? Fine. But and, and when we're talking about Bitcoin, again, that's fine. But quite often they talk about the issues in America, the events, the dates, the, the, the names, you know. Uh, quite often I get lost because I don't know what they're talking about. And this was early part of last year. I thought, you know what, I think we need a European space for European Bitcoiners. You know, we'll talk about Bitco Bitcoin fine, but at least, other than Bitcoin, we can talk about the local issues in in Europe as well, because, you know, we know what's going on in Europe. Um, so I tried um, a space called Cafe Europe, um, which hasn't been on for the last six weeks or so, but um, hopefully when I go back, it'll, st it'll start again. Um, but I find that European Bitcoiners are so elusive. Um, they will just pop in the space, they won't even talk, you know, 10 minutes later, they will leave. And uh, now my American friends come and support me. So it's like, it, you know, it, it says Cafe Europe, fine, but full of Americans. Um, I'd like to say, you know, I love all my American friends, so I'm not, I'm not having a go here. But yeah, Bitcoin is from Europe. I don't know, they don't really like spaces, I guess. I think it's also, I mean, I don't know for other countries, but for German speaking countries, they like to stay with German speaking spaces, mm. German speaking, like yeah. they, they feel they have a really bad English and they don't want to get on the English. I think that's uh, the language barrier is real, I feel like. But Robin, I've been on the road for three weeks now, you know, I'm touring Europe. Um, so France, Switzerland, Italy, Greece, um, Czech Republic. Now I'm here. Um, hopefully, if I've got some time, maybe I'll go to Netherlands and then back to UK. One thing though, wherever I go, people speak English. Yeah. People speak English, so I don't know why they would feel like that, but I would love to see more Europeans. I would love to, um, you know, meet more Europeans in this space or in, 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 you know, real life, you know, during conferences and all that. I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. If it wasn't for, like, um, Twitter, I think, yeah, we met on Twitter first, and then Prague, you were there, you know, with me a, a few weeks back. Uh, yeah, um, no, let's use the technology to get together, you know, mm -hmm. to exchange ideas, to discuss um, whatever problems we have here in Europe. Yeah, let's do that. 
If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And for those of you who are in search of a new Bitcoin exchange where they can buy their Bitcoin from, I recommend my personal Bitcoin exchange 21 Bitcoin. With code Robin, you get a hefty discount for all your purchases in the future. The thing that I meant is, um, for example, we have Roman Reha. He is the biggest, the block mm. trainer. He's the biggest in, in, in Germany. Like he's, you, like if someone says like, I want to learn about Bitcoin mm -hmm. in a in a German speaking area. He's the guy. He has a news website with great articles. He has a team behind him. Uh, they're researching. They're yeah. all like Bitcoin only. They're focused on that. This is high signal. I even have him. I uh, just <laughs> right when I was uh, waiting for you, I got the email that he will come on my podcast. Oh, uh, uh, Because I want to get those voices that are usually only in. German speaking uh, areas, yeah. also on an English speaking space. Yeah. Uh, it's not his first English um, uh, podcast, but he, he doesn't, he didn't do a lot of English podcasts. I think there are like five or something like that, mm. that I could find. Maybe there are more. Yeah. Um, and because they are, especially in the German speaking, I don't know with Spanish and all of other things, but in German, there are a lot of supply on German content for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Like there is a lot of podcasts, there are a lot of uh, uh, live streamers that almost yeah. do a daily live stream. Yeah. So you can really be just in a German speaking area, just in a German speaking yeah. Bitcoin community. You don't even have to get out of, uh, the, of your way because if you have to, um, as a German speaking guy, you have the possibility to, to speak in a German Twitter space or an yeah. English Twitter space. You're like, ah, I just go on the English Twitter space, yeah. uh, a German uh, Twitter space. I was, <laughs> I, I'm one of the examples that <laughs> likes English more than German. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of reasons I got uh, <laughs> in those reasons a lot in the podcast, so we'll uh, <laughs> not, not, not uh, explain them too much. But I think that's a, that's a huge thing that Europe has so many different languages. Languages, yeah. Uh, and America has English. I mean, America has no official language, as I learned from an American friend of me. Yeah. Uh, but they all speak English. Yeah, yeah, they do, they do. Um, now, another example is, um, you know, I'm a native Turkish speaker, right? Um, I haven't come across any Turkish, you know, Bitcoin spaces either. Oh. And yet there's a, um, you know, great, strong, like, hardcore Bitcoin community there. They've got a Telegram group. I know they, they talk there. And quite often the language they choose to speak in is English. Hmm. Um, but I've never seen any Turkish Bitcoin space. Now, every now and then I go into um, Turkish spaces and people see my laser eyes, you know, so they ask me questions. Um, and I try to answer their questions, you know, as much as possible. But the interest I get from normal people, that actually, uh, that makes me feel good. So even normal people are asking questions at least, you know, what is this? What's going on? How, you know, how do we, how do I do it? How, you know, so how, how does that work? So yeah, yeah, there, there is definitely interest and, you know, it, it, it makes me feel happy. Yeah. Especially in Turkey with uh, such a high, I mean, we have high inflation all around the world, but in Turkey especially. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's another, I think last time we, we, we talked about it, now up until last month, the inflation was, this is quite um, funny now, you're going to laugh at it. Last month, it was like just over 70%. This month, they declared that inflation is down to 26%. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. But, um, you know, I'm always in touch with my Turkish friends, my cousins in Turkey. Even this morning I had a uh, little chat uh, with someone in Turkey. Nobody is feeling it. It's 26%. It's just, uh, I don't know. They, they must have said, oh, you know what? Let's just say it's 26%. That's it. It's just a figure on, on a piece of paper. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. I feel like sometimes they, they might try with those low numbers to bring inflation down. Because I feel like if, if everyone, if you, if you can actually agree the, the national narrative that everything is 26%, mm. uh, people feel like that and then they are a little it's bit It's a more, psychological It's a psychology thing, yeah. game. Because if, if inflation is like known as like 200%, mm. then as a restaurant, you're way more likely, oh, I can also increase my prices. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's a an, there's an, an real impact you can have with yeah. putting out official numbers that are lower. But in the end of the day, you cannot fake it. Like there, there you can't. The, the inflation will come no matter what numbers you will write. Oh yeah, I mean things are so bad that I don't know. Say like you're a Turkish citizen, you go and do your shopping, and today you pay I don't know. Say like I don't know one thousand five hundred Turkish lira. You're shopping. Next week you go back, you will almost hundred. Well, say ninety nine percent certain that you will pay one thousand six hundred. You know, from week to week, and from day to day, prices change. Um. It is bad. And also, um, in the last few days, um, there's like some other stuff going on in Turkey. I don't know, there's a problem with like stray dogs and all that. So the government passed a new law to um, take things under control. But then again, in two, th about three days ago, the President Erdogan said something like, oh, you know, if Israel doesn't stop, we will invade Israel and all that kind of stuff. But I'm thinking, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Something else is going on here. I think it, they are trying to, I don't know, take people's attentions away from the real issue, which is the economy. So while people's, people's minds are busy with all this like new stuff, I reckon in the next, I don't know, few weeks, um, Turkish lira might lose more value against the American dollar. So I think at the moment, one dollar is like 33 Turkish lira or something. I don't know, in the next few weeks, if it goes up to like 35, 36, I won't be surprised. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's super interesting. Yeah, what's what's going on? Um, let's talk a little <clears throat> bit more about about Bitcoin. We have like four years ago, we had no like four and a half years ago, we had no public company in there. We had no country in there. We had no president talking about it. And now, like just four or five everyone years is, later, everyone is doing it. Yeah, everyone has talking about yeah. it. Yeah, like. Um, do you have some framework to think about what, what Bitcoin might look like in 5, 10, 20 years? Do you have some, some predictions about what's going on with Bitcoin in 20 years? Not, not only price. Oh, okay. Um, in terms of pre predictions, yeah, in, in price, I don't want to say anything. I think there's yeah. like, there are enough people there, you know that. Um, my personal thing, in my personal opinion, and if I'm wrong, uh, please someone correct me. I just don't think that full Bitcoin adoption will happen in the next, I don't know, four or five, maybe 10 years. I can't see that happening. Will it happen at some point in the future? Definitely, but not in the next few years. 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, who knows? Because, um, America, okay, the fiat system as we know it, it is still there. It's a fact, right? So which one is the, um, you know, world currency that is the american dollar so but before the american dollar collapses there are like another like 180 190 currencies that has to collapse fir collapse first then the american dollar and that will take time i mean what are we going to do you know with euro euro has to collapse as well you know so i think that will take a bit of time because i know these people are not going to go down without fighting Mm. But Bitcoin, as I always say, Bitcoin is inevitable. It will happen. Yeah. My, my theory is that in 2044, so around 20 years from 20 now, years from now yeah. uh, that it will be so extremely obvious that Bitcoin is the best savings technology ever. And not only to mm -hmm. our small Bitcoin community, mm -hmm. it will be like uh, mainstream, like, oh, yeah, you, you have money, uh, save it in Bitcoin, it's safe. Yeah. yeah. I think in 20 years we will succeed with that. I think uh, medium of exchange will be becoming too developed. Mm -hmm. It will be already like you can spend your Bitcoin on a lot of oh, places. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, and I think in like when you look at like phone, uh, like, 
let, let's say like iPhone, like how long are they here? Like 15 years. Uh, and we have now look 20 years back. Uh, nobody was running around with, with his phone like that. And no. Like that. Now nobody can get away. We have to invent like lock boxes for people that yeah. lock their own phones in a box because they're so addicted to their own That's phones. Right. That's right. That's uh, right. And I think people will will be in a positive way mm. addicted to Bitcoin. Um, you're right. Yeah, I can see that happening. What I'd like to see that um, Bitcoin, the technology, if, if it can be somehow simplified, more user friendly for normies, for like normal people. Um, I think the adoption process, you know, uh, will be even faster mm. because a lot of people, even now today, you know, a lot of Bitcoin conversations, especially the technical side, right, can be so confusing. Yeah. You know, if it can be simplified for people, I, and, and I don't know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, right, but I'm just saying just simplify it. Say like the, um, you know, self-custody, for example. Um, self-custody, now I find it easy and simple. But try to explain it to a homie. Yeah. And it, it's a journey. Uh, it is, be, be, yeah. Because first you're like, oh, nice, I got Bitcoin. Mm. And then everyone on Twitter says like, oh, you have to take it off exchange. And I'm like, what? Like, mm. I cannot just leave it on exchange like my, my uh, stocks I have. Yeah, or like a bank account. Yeah. And, and, and then you take uh, your first hardware wallet. For example, Bitbox is one of my sponsors. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you get your first bit, uh, your Bitbox, like your hardware wallet, and you're like, you put it there, and I'm like, oh, but what happens when I lose my Bitbox? Mm. Then you get in like, oh, backup seed phrases. Then you're like, oh, but it's just a piece of paper. It can burn. Then you get in like steel wallets. You get steel, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then you're like, oh, but when someone comes to my home, he can just take it right oh but five key three keys like multi yeah you can split it yeah uh, and, and then you're like oh collaborative cassidy so i have a part <laughs> <laughs> like that, it's a rabbit hole in itself i know i know i know see see all that i think um now i'm in it now i'm interested in it, and there is so much for me to learn never mind a, a beginner i don't know if things could be somehow simplified as i said i don't even know what i'm trying to say here i'm just saying i'm just using the word like simplify just to um get more people on board a bit easier um that would be great but then again if this is what it is that's fine you know people have to people people have to just people have to just you know run down the rabbit hole and learn that's it I like to look at ten years in the in the history of Bitcoin and how hard it was to even get Bitcoin in the in the in the early days, and how easy it's now become yeah. uh, in most countries, and then extrapolate that exponential because as the price grows, the value, uh, net worth, and purchasing power of Bitcoin has grows, mm -hmm. the more people will come in, yeah. and the more incentives there are for companies. To build better stuff. Yeah. Like you just just look at the Bitcoin conference the last ten years. Yeah. The first one with like hundred people in in a, in the conference room half empty and Andr Andreas Antonopoulos is speaking and nobody's yeah. listening. Ten years later, you have a conference with twenty thousand people where yeah. like they are lining up a whole day to get in to see the. Uh, next, the forty seventh president of the United yeah. States speaking about Bitcoin, like that's a it's hell unbelievable. Of a development. Yeah, 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 definitely. As I said, you know, we'd like to see things like that in 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 Europe, um, and why stop in Europe? Yeah, do it do it in Asia as well. You know, um, no, Bitcoin is inevitable. Sooner or later, you know, whether they like it or not, no, they're going to come on board because they have to. Otherwise, they're going to be you know left behind. You know, like so many people, I feel like, you know, as Bitcoin is, we are where we are now, fine. But 10, 20 years from now, as we said earlier, um, yes, you know, Bitcoin will be used as like normal day, daily money, maybe. But I feel that a lot of people will be um, left behind. And oh, I don't know if you, if you can understand what I'm trying to say, because we're just stacking as much as we can. And it's not just us. Now the banks are buying Bitcoin. Now the governments are, bit, are buying Bitcoin. Um, uh, okay, so, you know, what's my part in this? I am trying to speak to as many people as I can and trying to orange peel them, trying to, you know, explain how, what this is and how it works uh, compared to the normal money, a normal, you know, financial system. Um, so that's my part. Um, and if, if I can do it, you know, if I can orange peel even more people, yeah. Is, is that the, the best thing? Uh Everyone can do orange pill, their neighbors orange pill, uh, the people they love. Um, 
No, not necessarily. I think people have different paths. You know, um, I, I know you, you you spoke to you know a few technical people, developers, and all that. You know, they've got their their job. You know, they they do what they do, and you know we're all grateful for what they do. Right, fine. Um, but as a normal player, as a non technical person, I still feel like I have a part to play in this. You know, Bitcoin community. You know, I'm not just here to stack and talk whatever. Now, what is my job? Um, I'm a natural mediator, believe it or not, um, and I've all I've always been like that. I actually bring people together, right? That's what I do, um, and I, and I do it. It's just just a natural talent. I don't get paid for it or anything like that. And I can um, attest to that yeah. because you brought a lot of people already on my podcast. <laughs> but but that's that's what I do. You know, um, you know, I, I bring fr friends together. Say like in my where I where I live. You know, if people need I don't know a particular trader and they don't know, so I I know people, so I get, I, I bring people together. So um, and in within the Bitcoin community, I'm thinking, you know, I can do the same thing. You know, bring people together and explain Bitcoin, bring people on board. You know, uh, orange peel them. Um, that's my natural talent. Talent, and you know, I'll just use it. I'll just use it. Why not? Mm. Yeah, I, I love that a lot. Yeah, uh, which brings me to one question that I now ask all my guests uh, before the end routine. Mm -hmm. um, what can we learn from you besides Bitcoin and besides the things that we talked about? From me? Yes, I, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I put that question now because I feel like Bitcoiners are such unique personalities. Mm. And when we only talk about Bitcoin in the Bitcoin podcast, mm -hmm. we never get to know the other sides or we, we can learn from each other a little bit better if we purposely yeah. expose the things that we know outside of Bitcoin. Because I got to know about citizenships and everything like that because of Bitcoiners. Mm -hmm. I got to know about diet because of Bitcoiners. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of other topics that we can learn about. And I, I'm just curious, like sometimes... Oh, what can you learn from me? I don't know. I'm a, I'm, I'm a great traveler. Traveler. Um, I love traveling. You know, I love driving. So there is that. But um, uh, something that I never talk about, and this is something different, um, something I never talk about in spaces because it never comes up. Um, my background is actually martial arts. You know, I've been oh, I've been wow. in karate cool. yes yeah, since 1989, since I was 13. Um, I've got um, in European championships. I've got quite a few medals as wow. well. So that's that's my past. You know, um, you know you can learn that from me if you want to learn it. <laughs> um, other than that, oh, man, I don't, I don't know really. You know, that, that's a very sudden question. Now, what can I learn from you? I don't know. You can, yeah. But martial arts is a great one. It is. Um, I've always been, even as a child, I've always been a physical person, right? Um, I can't see myself sitting, in, you know, sitting at a desk and work, you know, from eight till five. I can't do that. Even, you know, today, uh, my job is, you know, I, I work outside, you know, I work physically, I do like building maintenance and all that. So I've always been physical. Um, but when it comes to martial arts, <laughs> as a small kid, I was a bit naughty, I think, you know, I used to, I always, I was always in fights with like local kids and that. But yeah, once I started karate, I thought, oh, you know what, you can fight and you can get medals for it. All right, let's go. You know, that's how it started. But Later in life, you know, it calmed me, calmed me down a lot. And even today, um, I'm not a competitor, competitor anymore, but I'll tell you, karate affects um, uh, almost, you know, every aspect, uh, aspect of my life because there is that uh, um, resilience. You know, you have to go, you have to go, you have to push, push, push. That's, that's what you do in karate, you know, uh, during training, during, you know, competition. So uh, even at work, you know, push, 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 while I'm stacking, push, 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 you know, so, yeah, I, I apply, you know, karate, you know, for everything in my life. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it, it's, it's if you want to be a sovereign individual, mm -hmm. to a certain extent, it can be very helpful to be at least capable of dealing with, uh, I mean, you don't want to get in fights in real life on street fights because you never Avoid know. Avoid it as much as yeah. yeah. You, you never know what the other person has mm. in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but it it could save your life. Definitely, definitely. Um, and 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 you know, it, first of all, any kind of support is sports, right? If you have got a child, sport. I don't know, gymnastics, karate, swimming. I don't know, judo, whatever. Sports. I don't know. They they teach kids discipline. That's one thing. And secondly, martial arts, you know, 
I would recommend and not correct about judo to everyone. Um, I love judo. I follow judo. I don't do judo myself, but I appreciate that sport, um, you know, so much. Uh, but as you say, if you're in a situation and if you know what to do, how to defend yourself, at least, you know, you'll have a chance. Uh, so in that sense, yeah, it's great. It's great. One last question on that. A lot of people uh, I see when, when, when they talk about uh, martial arts, they're like, oh, I don't want to do it. I, I probably hurt myself. It's, it's like in training, uh, it's... it's Is judo something safe to train, or is it kind it of? It is. Like it is definitely. There is no age for it. It's like karate, judo, and whatever you want to do. There is no age for it. You can start at the age of what seven, seventeen, yeah. or forty-seven, fifty-seven, seventy-seven, whatever. Um, but you have to be aware of the fact that it is a you know physical support. You know, sport. You know, du during a training, yes, you will fall or you will get hit. But uh, um, these, I don't know, martial arts clubs, they're so professional. You know, they won't let you, um, you know, harm yourself, you know. Accidents might happen like everything else. But other than that, they're, they're, I can say, you know, they're completely safe. Definitely. For, for me, it's almost like uh, when you talk about safety, like you, you can avoid martial art and then you go into your, I don't know, Uh, chess games and on the way to the chess game you get hit by the bus like, oh. <laughs> like, like <laughs> so safety is always yeah. like a, a yeah. weird topic because if, even if you go the safest route you might die <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or you, you definitely die but you, you might actually uh, yeah do it. yeah like, i mean i'll just say you know just because you know martial arts i don't i wouldn't want anyone to go oh i know martial arts and, and then you, yeah you get knocked out right yeah. there and there's, that's embarrassing <laughs> as well yeah <laughs> Yeah. Uh, amazing, perfect. Then uh, let's get into our end routine. Our end routine is uh, where the previous guest is asking a question for our next guest without okay. knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and uh, the question for you is, uh, that's a question that's quite general, uh, but can go quite deep. Mm -hmm. What does uh, Bitcoin actually mean for you? What does Bitcoin actually mean for me? You know, I'm going to give you... Uh The same answer i think bitcoin means obviously freedom to everyone bitcoin uh, is the greatest store of value greatest you know greatest thing ever i think you know uh we have but I'll, i'll tell you um i think bitcoin means to me uh my daughter's freedom mm -hmm. you know as i was saying earlier i stack for uh, i stack for my daughter and if i can benefit from it just a little bit that's fine as well but otherwise that's for my daughter's uh, future and um Bitcoin and all the benefits, all the freedom that it, that it's going to bring, it's going to provide for my daughter. Yeah, that's that's what it means to me. You know, my daughter is everything. The sun literally, literally, like you know, rises and sets with her for me. So I do, I do everything for her. So Bitcoin is for her. Yeah, it's that's important. that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people reach out to you? Where can we? Where can people uh, find you, ask you questions, reach oh, out right. to you? Oh, right, okay. Um, I mean, I'm always on Twitter. Uh, you know, um, a lot of people know me, but yeah, I'm a bear hunter on Twitter. Um, yeah, just DM me. Where does bear hunter actually come from? I'm a bear hunter. You know what? I really, I mean, I don't hunt bears, bears or anything like that. <laughs> I was thinking about yeah, that. Yeah. Because with I martial think, arts also? <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, I can't even remember what my first handle was. But um, when I, you know, dived into the Bitcoin community, a lot of people were talking about the bear market, bear market, bear market. I don't know. I, got, I just got the idea. And, and I didn't even know oh, what bear market, bear market meant oh, or yeah. bull market meant. I didn't know. But when I found out what it was, okay, okay, I'm a bear hunter. So that's, that's how it started. But and, and it got stuck with me. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, thank you always for being here. No worries. It's a pleasure. And also thank you for everyone watching and listening for joining us today. I'll be back as always tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye. Bye bye. It was great. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>